basketball player Larry Bird. Delphi found a way to make him even better. The movie that answers a question no one asked. What would Larry Bird look like if he were black? Ooh, it's going to be a long one. This video is going to be short, though, because this movie sucks and I don't want to talk about it for too long. It begins with... A tech millionaire who buys the Dallas Mavericks and is upset that his team is good, but not great. Mark Cuban, anyone? Dallas has gotten off to a sluggish start this season, as they usually do. But we must remember that they've been in playoff contention since the second year of the franchise. All I ever do anymore is talk about money. PJ, you schmuck. You should be happy. Most people would kill to have your kind of problems. I used to think that. I mean, I really used to think that money was the answer. But it's not. The answer is success. That success he speaks of must come on the court. And in order to get success, he hires one of his... Oh, God. Why? He gets a research and development guy who's cartoonishly nerdy to learn what basketball is. Uh, give me Alvin's on the fourth floor. Is Alvin's a computer? No, he's real, all right. He's that little weasel with the specs. Doc Alvin's. Always good to see you. You know, I was just telling the board that you're the best man in the business. Well, so what do you want now, Mr. Johnson? Are you in the middle of anything important? The Pentagon Project. Don't you remember? You asked me to personally supervise it. Okay, all... Alvin. Right, I remember. In excruciatingly long scenes, we learn what a basketball player is, how basketball works, and what to look for in a perfect player. Super Nerd is able to find the perfect profile, but not before the owner tries to break into his computer and this happens. Please file proper access code immediately. There. Now maybe you'll listen to me. Let's just mute this part a little bit so your computer's not screaming that across your house. So we found our new player. The problem is they're only 5'8". At this point when this movie came out, there were only two players in the league that were under 5'8", and they were the only two that had been under 5'8 in over 40 years. Who is this? This is Brad. Are you sitting down? We found our man. A 5'8 point guard from somewhere up north. 5'8? <laughs> That's a proctologist for our guy. It's not a point guard. There's also another slight problem with the player. Hi! She's a girl. Second game, she gets in and things don't go great. Finally on the right side at the top of the lane to LaFrance. LaFrance looking underneath and oh my, Williams catches an elbow from Dexter. And dirty Dexter of Atlanta, as they call him, knocked Williams into the floor. Now Williams is going backwards. She's on his back. It's a free throw out of... The new player is Terry Williams. And as she starts to get more playing time, the point guard that she replaced is not happy. He first privately, then publicly states that he thinks she's getting time because she's dating the boss. Williams, what in your opinion could possibly be the explanation for the current situation? Maybe her best move off the court, if you know what I mean. The press, of course, accuses him of being sexist, but in his defense, Terry thought she was dating the boss and gets really upset when she finds out he's banging one of the cheerleaders. Terry, what a surprise. Why are you up so early? I just wanted you to know how I feel about my greatest fan. But it's sort of a bad time. You see... Brad, I'm... who is it? Yeah, Brad, who is it? After a lot of crying about betrayal and I thought you liked me, we get a montage of ball skills with a song about love in the background. Weird. Oh, 
it's time for the big championship series, and the big bad player and the other team will have no mercy on no girl. Amos, uh, you're going to be guarding against a player by the name of Terry Williams tonight. Now, will her being a woman have any influence on your intense style of play? Well, we all know that this has been kind of a, <clears throat> a man sport for a long time, you know? And I'm not going to do her any favors if she tries to invade my territory. She needs to know this so she doesn't get hurt, catch an elbow or something. He better not hurt that lady, or he'll be cooking dinner for himself. And she suffers permanent brain damage. And breaks for the basket. Williams on the steal, up with the layup. No, she takes a hard ball with not just a little help from Mr. Amos Washington. Now Williams will bring it down court, and she looks like she's just a little bit woozy to me, Vern. She's having a tough time bringing it down court. Across half court. On the right side, off her knee, and Williams is down on the floor and out for the count. Leading to a 15-minute scene of romance between the owner and Terry that I won't show you because there's copyrighted music over. Finishing with her miraculously recovering from her brain damage and scoring the winning shot. This is a legitimately terrible movie that doesn't know what it is. It has sports, comedy, and romance, but they're all done badly, and the comedy's so cringy. The sports, I know it's sexist, but it's unbelievable for a 5'8 woman to compete in the NBA. No woman's even came close. Nancy Lieberman, who plays Terry, did play in a men's league because, as she'll tell anyone with ears, the WNBA didn't come around until she was 39. But she was in minor, minor leagues. Even in the mid-90s kids' movies, they never had a woman play pro sports. It was a monkey or a dog or a little kid. Plot-wise, they're so inconsistent. The coach puts her in, and no one will pass to her. So he's like, okay, next person doesn't pass to her, fired. And then he gets called to the owner's office, and he's like, you gotta tell these guys to pass to her. Like, I'm the coach of the team. Of course, that's what I did, dummy. And then Chip, the old starting point guard, he goes on TV, says, I want to be traded I can't stand that she's getting playing time only because she's sleeping with the boss. And he doesn't get traded. Championship game. He's on the team. The only reason why she comes back in after her brain damage is because he gets followed out of the game and she promises I'll marry you if you let me play the last three and a half minutes of the game. Let's get into the crew and then cast of this one. The writer and director, you've never heard of them. This is the only thing they've ever done, other than some small movie called Thinking Big that you've also never heard of. The producer is Lewis George, and inexplicably, this is his best movie out of ten. The cinematographer is Brian H. Hooper, who only did horror movies outside of this one. Uh, cast is... Rocky Patterson, who was in Rotor, The Nail Gun Massacre, and Replicator. Jesus Christ. Rob Schuyler was in 38 roles, having one scene as a doorman or a cabbie or a bathroom clerk or something. In this, he played one of the scorekeepers. And Jim Burden was in 16 TV shows for one episode, including... TNT, starring Mr. T, which we have reviewed on this very channel. No one in any of the main roles ever did anything before or again. Thank you for watching. This movie, for good reason, only has 47 ratings on IMDb. And as always, I shall try to do better next time. Here's your bonus clip where inexplicably the movie makes fun of Ted Turner.
who at the time owned the Atlanta Hawks and bought WCW shortly before the movie was made. Well, since we have lost our interest in basketball, I've been keeping an eye on this sport. Have you been uh, keeping up with everything that's been going on in the wrestling world lately? Brad, please don't tell me you're going to buy a wrestling team. Well, I didn't say that. But there is a good opportunity for an enterprising couple like us. You mean for yourself, partner? It's hard to tell, but I think the match they're watching is Ricky Steamboat versus Don Morocco. 